So this question is, you're a dumbass dude. Ever actually go on the primal diet? No, didn't think so. Well, here's the thing, man. I was I did I did the primal diet, the paleo diet, long before it was ever mainstream. Back in 1999, 1998, I was working in the gym. Um, mm, it's good stuff. Pineapples and Thailand, amazing. Anyway, so anyway, so I'm in 1999, 98, working in a gym as a personal trainer, doing the paleo thing. And because uh, it's all about you know low carb, high protein, high fat, healthy fats, grass fed fats. Because in Australia, people don't realise that at least ninety percent of our beef or our cow ass is grass fed. About ninety percent of our dairy, aka bovine mammary excretions, is de- is grass fed as well. So we've got grass fed cow flesh, grass fed you know cow titty juice. It's all grass fed in Australia. At least ninety percent is commercially. So when you go to eat McDonald's eating grass-fed beef. And people say, the grass-fed beef's the magical, it's got the CLA and all that rubbish and all this stuff that the human body already produces anyway. So you gotta you know, go and eat the, the dead flesh to get that. And it makes you slim. CLA is like the obesity uh, beneficial, you know, magic co X factor, whatever. And if you eat that, you'll never have obesity. But then people come to Australia and go, wow, Australians are really fat. You know, one of the fattest nations on the earth. One of the fattest nations on earth. We're actually one of the fattest nations on earth, and you go to Australia, man, and it's it's fat city. It is fat city. You go to the beach, and you know, you see people. Is that a whale? Is that a is that a oh, that's an Aussie Aussie. It's an Aussie person on the edge of the beach. There, it's not a whale. It's okay. Keep walking. So I did the paleo diet, did the primal diet, did the low carb thing. Failed epically. Almost died. Paleo almost killed me. The primal diet almost killed me. I. I wouldn't shit for a week. I was so constipated. I was like, you know, wanting to have fruit, but I couldn't have fruit. Just maybe a piece of fruit here and there, and just failing epically, feeling shit and uh, you know, bad breath. You know, when you eventually when you have a crap after a week, not having a crap, you sort of, you know, you're making sure no one's going to use the toilet for you after you for at least like two or three hours. It's just horrendous, man. Full bloating, just like. And I looked a bit leaner because I was losing a bit of water weight because I was under card, so I didn't have any glycogen storage, so I was a bit more lean, but I'm actually as lean as I am now as I was then, and now I eat as much as I want when it comes to carbohydrate. It was really unsustainable, and I started to develop really dark black. As you can see, my eyes are very, very clear now, but I had like big panda eyes here, like looked like, you know, all the paleo gurus out there, like from that, the big panda eyes, the dark under the eyes. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it's definitely a sign of bad adrenal health. These people are experiencing adrenal exhaustion, indicated by the big black under here, and the caffeine addiction. Holy crap! When I went paleo prime, I was like knocking back the caffeine like it was just going out of style. You know, just caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. Like if you read all the blogs from Sean Croxton or Mark Sisson or Paul Check and uh, you know all the other paleo low carb primal gurus. It's just caffeine, 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 all day long. And I'm like, dawned on me, because I've got out of drugs, and I'm thinking, hang on, I'm going to this paleo primal thing because it's healthier, so called. And I've stopped doing drugs many years ago now, but I'm, I'm a fucking caffeine addict. I'm running, I'm literally running on caffeine. I'm going from caffeine to caffeine. What's going on here? I'm having caffeine before workouts, I'm having caffeine after workouts so I can still be, you know, socialising. What am I doing? And actually, I haven't had a cup of coffee since October 1999, which marked a period in my life where I said, actually, I'm going to start eating carbohydrates. I'm going to eat as much carbohydrates as I want. The book I read back in 1998, 1999 was called Neanderthal, Eat Like a Caveman, Be Lean or something like that. And I think it was by Ray... Ray or Debt, I'm not sure the pronunciation's right, but I know it's called Neanderthin, so look it up, that's a book I read back in 98, 99. And I've got nothing against Mark Sisson, actually, Mark Sisson is one of the reasons, <laughs> this is crazy, I'm just going to sound crazy, Mark Sisson is one of the people that inspired me to get into low-fat lifestyle, because I read his book, Training and Racing for Duathlons, which I still use today, I still give to people as an excellent recommendation to get into cycling and running. So even though... I disagree with Mark Sisson entirely on nutrition. I promote his work still, which is pretty ironic. When people say, oh, you just hate Mark Sisson, this is some personal thing. That's not a personal thing at all. I think Mark Sisson's a legend when it comes to training, 
so running in duathlons. When it comes to diet now, I feel he's just sold out to make the money on low carb fat. That's just my opinion. I'm just saying. So I still share Mark Sisson's work, and I critique it hardcore on one end. So it's both extremes there. So I think Mark Sisson's got some awesome things to say about training and racing for duathlon, cycling and running. Definitely awesome things. And even in that booklet I give to people, share with people training and racing for duathlons. Mark says the importance of eating low fat for performance. And that was what sort of shook me out of my Neanderthal caveman mentality was actually Mark Sisson's thing. And then that year when Lance Armstrong came back from cancer on the Tour de France, I also read that Lance cut out red meat and dairy and went vegan. I was like, vegan? What's vegan? I looked up vegan on the internet and it went from there. So I've got to thank Mark Sisson back in 1999 for sort of waking me up out of my primal paleo caveman Neanderthal mentality it was killing me, literally killing me. So thanks Mark Sisson. And that's the last time I had a cup of coffee, October 1999. The last time I had a cup of coffee was in my little paleo primal phase. And it was amazing. And now all my friends that were doing that, the ones who stayed doing that got very sick. And uh, most of them are quite overweight now because paleo primal makes you overweight in the long run. Just look at the people who do it long term. Here's Lauren Cordain, long term. Uh, a paleo blog, I'm not sure of her name. No, I'm not making fun of anyone, I'm just using these as physical examples. Gary Torbs, again, not making fun, just pointing, pointing out the physical, obvious. Uh, we've got Jimmy Moore, great guy, did actually did an interview with Jimmy, friendly guy, but overweight, obese. And Andrew Whale, again, not nice guy, but very overweight from his high fat diet. Barry Sears, another nice guy, but you know, overweight, always does the face shot. And we've got Nigella Lawson, the famous chef for a uh, Paleo primal people, low carb. This guy, oh, I don't know how Doug Graham got in there. He's actually a vegan, high carb. And, and, and people try and be really strict on it, and then they binge out on Ben and Jerry's. And here's a photo on the internet Rob Wolf and Mark Sisson enjoying their ice cream chocolate sundaes. And it doesn't make people bad people because they're eating ice cream chocolate sundaes at the local ice cream house. It doesn't make them bad people. But when you're telling people not to eat watermelon because it contains too much sugar, and you're going eating chocolate sundae ice creams, I don't know about that, that's, uh, it's a bit confusing, you know what I mean? So there's plenty of people out there blowing their health apart, their waistline apart eventually because this primal diet, paleo diet, is, is it's deathly. All the medical doctors like Dr. McDougall, Dr. Esselstein, Dr. Ornish, the China study professor, Dr. Callan Campbell, these people who have qualifications and experience are saying, hey, look out for these high fat, high protein, low carb lifestyles because they're very dangerous to your adrenal health, your renal health, your heart health your bone health, your mental health. If you don't consume enough carbohydrates, you get depressed. That's why all these low carb people are just caffeine and drugs and they're really on the edge of breakdown because they're just so carbohydrate deficient. That's why they have to go to Ben and Jerry's and binge out in their ice cream, get some sugar in eventually because if you do low carb long enough, you're gonna get very depressed. Your body won't produce enough serotonin. And look up serotonin and depression. And look up what antidepressants do to serotonin. They raise your serotonin levels. So instead of having Prozac, you can just have potatoes or fruit, optimally, fruit's the best bet, raise up your serotonin levels and you're laughing. Look at the book, Potatoes versus Prozac. There's plenty of, there's many clinical studies done on people doing low carb diets and getting cl clinically depressed. Low carb equals low mood. Low carb equals low glycogen. Low glycogen is low mood, low energy, low vitality, means you're gonna be binging at Ben and Jerry's. And then you get the those fatty, greasy carbs the carbage, I call it, the carbage with the fat, I call that carbage. Carbs with no fat, like fruits, potatoes, things like that, they're the best ones. But fruit is always the best, because fruits are so satisfying when you eat enough calories from it. Digest the treats. So these, these paleo people are telling you not to eat the fruit, and I almost died. I almost died. So I went from the paleo, I went over to vegetarianism, and then went vegan and into the raw foods lifestyle. It was just, I was actually glad I did the paleo, because now I can speak with authority, I can speak with personal experience. When someone says, oh, you didn't try the paleo primal thing. Mate, I was doing paleo primal before you were probably even born or before you even got into the health kick, man. I've been in this industry a long time. I've been in this scene a long time. I'm not some person who's just, you know, showed up on YouTube and making videos, you know, just whatever. I've been actually been in this for a long time. I've trained with some of the fittest people on the planet. I talk with doctors from around the world. I travel literally around the world talking to literally thousands of people for the last decade all over the world. I, I talk to anyone on the street. People who hang with me, they know that. I'll spark up a conversation with anyone, I'll stop someone on the street and say, hey, you looking good, what are you doing, or, or whatever, or, wow, you got cancer, how did that happen? I've become like a forensic. So the paleo primal thing, I've done that, and that's why I speak out against that, because it's a very dangerous program, it's causing a lot of health issues, heart disease, we're seeing it, cancer, leukemia, the bovine leukemia virus, 
ask your grass-fed dairy person, what are you doing to prevent bovine leukemia virus in your cattle? What are you doing? What are you doing to prevent the pig pinworm? What are you doing to prevent the toxic levels of mercury in the salmon? And people say, oh, but we test our salmon. And I'll tell you what, that's absolutely rubbish. There's no way you can test every single individual fish before you ship it to market. Do you know how expensive methyl mercury testing is? Do you know how expensive it is to test your fish levels for cadmium or strontium or radium? Do you know how expensive that is? That, that's nonsense. People say, oh, test every single salmon. It goes out the door of our factory. That's absolute rubbish. You're lying to people. It's not true. Because if it was true, the salmon would cost $100 a piece. I'd like to see a bit more transparency and honesty with this whole paleo primal thing and this whole, there's no methyl mercury in the salmon. Absolute rubbish. There's bovine leukemia virus in the cattle in the U.S. There's bovine leukemia virus in all these cattle. When you're doing it organically, you're not allowed legally to use the pharmaceutical agents to prevent the bovine leukemia virus. You're not allowed to do that. So I'm asking all the organic farmers out there who raise the cattle and say that they don't even say. They just try and pretend and dance around the equation. But I'm asking you, please show us the evidence that your cattle and your raw dairy and all that stuff and your grass-fed colostrum is free from bovine leukemia virus. And I'm telling you, if you're doing the paleo primal thing, I encourage you to please ring up the people and say, ask these critical tests for your health. Sure, there's the animal ethics and the animal rights and the environmental catastrophes that are happening with the grass-fed industry. That's one thing. But I'm saying, if you're into it for the health. If you're doing this for health reasons, for your family, for your health and your own benefit, please ring up those farmers, ring up the people like Dr. McCullough who are selling away protein powder and ask them for the clinical data testing, the independent laboratory testing that proves their protein powders, etc. do not have bovine leukemia virus in them. I'm just saying, that's a good question to ask. Instead of just giving your MasterCard and Visa card details out to people and blindly following what they're saying, ask the critical questions. Ask the questions they don't want you to ask. Ask the questions that get deleted off their forums or YouTube channels. Ask the critical questions. If you don't, you're going to suffer with your health. You're going to get ripped off. You're going to get conned. You're going to become another statistic in the heart disease, cancer world, whatever. So I'm encouraging people, educate yourself or get medicated. Don't be a sucker for new age scam fads. Paleo diet, primal diet, very dangerous for health. Almost personally killed me. And I'm just speaking out about it, sharing my personal experience like many other people do, but they get silenced on the forums, they get deleted, stuff like that. So creating a channel here where people can share their opinions. Post your comments down below, what's been your experience with the paleo lifestyle, and just read what people's experiences have been. And man, I'll tell you what, these people, they do not want me out there spreading this message. Because it's a big industry. The beef industry is a massive industry, it's big. And they've got people they fund and sponsor to get this you know, anti-carb message out there. And pretend to people that you're getting fat from eating steamed potatoes. You're getting fat from eating bananas. You're getting fat from eating too many blueberries. You're getting fat from having dates. You're getting fat from fruit. You're getting fat from rice. Not the Chinese people who live on rice and vegetables and fruit all the day as their majority caloric source, and they're getting obese. We know that's absolute freaking rubbish. That's absolute lies to sell more product, more BS to people. And I'm just sick of that personally, so I'm putting it out there sharing the truth. And we have examples, like high profile examples, like Dr. Atkins, big promoter of the paleo primal low carb lifestyle. So get rid of the fruit, get rid of the rice, eat as much fat as you want, make sure it's animal fat, saturated fat. Dr. Atkins, rest in peace Dr. Atkins, died 258 pounds on the autopsy table. He was 258 pounds. And I, I know a lot of people say out there that Dr. Atkins was actually, you know, 180 pounds, looked like Bruce Lee, and magically somehow he put on 80 pounds after he died in hospital or something like that. You know, this is the stories out there, you read it. Dr. Atkins was like, looked like Bruce Lee, but just a bit bigger, and 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 and, 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 and they tricked his body into make, like big getting bigger on the autopsy. But, like, just the rubbish out there that the low carb paleo primal dogmatic people want to stick onto so they can have their bacon and eggs at TGI Fridays and have their chicken wings as long as they bless them, like Paul Check recommends. You can get us a plate of chicken wings at TGI Fridays in some airport, and I know they were raised in humanely, they got a bunch of hormones and crap in them. Hey, who needs more love than that poor little bird? <laughs> so I open my heart, and I bless that bird, and I say to that bird, you may have been treated unfairly, you may have been raised in a dark cage and been fed garbage food, but guess what? We're a team now, baby! <laughs> it's me and you! And now we're gonna have fun! And now we're gonna make love! So your whole life had a happy ending! It's me! Dr. Atkins, 258 pounds, dead, obese. When they cut him open, did the autopsy, which they do legally, chronic 
atherosclerosis, chronic heart disease. In a diet, he promoted that would reverse heart disease, prevent heart disease, prevent obesity. So Dr. Atkins passed away obese, riddled with heart disease. And then we have Stephen Byrne, president of the Weston A. Price Foundation, dead. He was close to my age from stroke. Said that his diet would reverse any chances of stroke, etc. Died of stroke. Rest in peace, Stephen Burns. We have all these people. This is, and then we have all the people low profile that never get into the media. We've got many people in the paleo primal thing, primal world getting heart disease because the diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol has been shown to you know, induce heart disease. And all these people out there saying, "Oh no, it doesn't." Show me any clinical study where they put people on high fat, low carb, animal based programs and they reverse heart disease. It's already been done with Dr. Esselstein. Go to the website heartattackproof.com. Read this book. Check this book out. Read this book. And you paleo primal low carb people, please show me a book like this that gets the same results as Dr. Esselstein's gotten on a high fat, low carb, animal based lifestyle. Show me. There's all this talk out there. There's all this talk and nonsense. So I'm, I'm requesting the Mark Sisson, Rob Wolf, Sean Croxton, all the paleo people out there who say, Fruit makes your fat, rice clogs your arteries. Steamed rice clogs your arteries. That's what they're saying out there. Show me a book like this that's written by the paleo people. All you guys are doing is using someone like Denise Minger, who's like a 17-year-old English major, and using her as like the nutritional authority. I mean, if you look up Dogman Dictionary, <laughs> it could go paleo primal low carb movement. Where's the science paleo primal low carb crew? Where is the science? Where's the study like the China study? Where's the the, the reversing heart disease, where's all the cancer clinics around the world? What the cancer clinics around the world who get the results without the medications? What are they using for these like magical reversals? They're using high carb, low fat, plant based, vegan. They're not using the high fat animal based programs are they? Not a single cancer clinic around the world that's getting results is using the high fat program ever. Same with type 2 diabetes. Look at this book. Dr. Neil Bernard. Where is the paleo primal equivalent of this book? Clinically done, not some anecdotal evidence scraped off some, from some forum somewhere. I'm talking clinical data like this book. Where is it? It's not there. How come? Because the high fat animal based program is dangerous for your health. It makes you fat, it makes you bloated, it makes you constipated, it turns you into a caffeine addict, it turns you into an aggressive person to go to animal adrenaline because you don't shit for a week. You're feeling crap, you're running on caffeine, you can't sleep properly, your serotonin's low, you're getting depressed, you're getting angry, you're getting aggressive. Simple as that. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next video. Post your comments and questions down below. Peace.